Welcome to Nation Beat. I am Janelle Novel bringing you this brief on the pulse of our nation and highlights around the heart of St. Lucia. Several initiatives aimed at generating revenue from tourism at the community level have been rolled out. Efforts at preserving St. Lucia's wildlife score a new lifeline and the mobility of St. Lucians with physical disabilities is improved. In keeping with the declaration of 2019 as the year of revenue in the tourism sector by Minister for Tourism, several initiatives have been rolled out to realize that goal. On Friday, 25th January 2019, Minister Honorable Dominic Fede chaired a meeting of the Tourism Advisory Council to discuss how St. Lucia can reap better benefits from the cruise passenger arrivals, as well as the positioning of Sufra in the cruise tourism business. Here's Anisia Antoine. The Tourism Advisory Committee is a multi-stakeholder advisory group. Since its launch last year, the committee has been generating consensus on the way forward for the development and management of tourism in St. Lucia. To this end, a subcommittee was created to devise ways to increase tourism expenditure in the country. Minister with Responsibility for Tourism, Information, Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries and Chairperson of the Tourism Advisory Committee, Honorable Dominic Fede. What we're doing is to make sure that we come together and come up with a comprehensive strategy um, on the way forward to improving the revenue situation. Uh, what are those little steps that we can take right now to um, keep improving the bottom line of the destination? The figures from the cruise lines, um, the Brio study suggests that St. Lucia is uh, benefiting from a 95% disembarkation, but the cruise lines are spending less than about 50% of their time at the dock on shore. So what we want to do is to make sure that we improve on this situation, that when 95% of the people come off, that we give them a lot of things to do and that we give them a lot of things to buy. Aviva St. Clair, Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Department of Tourism, explained that the Tourism Advisory Committee has been working closely with the Sufre Marine Management Agency and other stakeholders to develop the soft skills and technical skills in areas such as sail repair and boat motor repair. There's a lot of potential for um, provision of services to um, yachtsmen and yachts uh, persons generally. Um, and um, we're looking to allow them to leverage those opportunities uh, so that they have the technical knowledge, they have the expertise, and they can um, engage into that type of business. Um, we're also working with the surrounding properties and the day boat um, operators who uh, bring cruise ship passengers there to expand the number of areas that um, can be used uh, for the, by the cruise ship passengers um, so that other areas, um, other parts of Sufre get access to economic opportunities. The Tourism Advisory Committee meeting was held on the 25th of January 2019 at the Orchid Gardens in Union Castries. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Efforts at preserving St. Lucia's wildlife scored a new lifeline via an extended partnership with the Association for the Conservation of Threatened Parrots. Details from Amanda Faye Clark. An eight-year extension to a partnership agreement to safeguard St. Lucia's indigenous wildlife was made formal with a recent signing of a breeding loan agreement between the Ministry of Agriculture and the Association for the Conservation of Threatened Parrots, the ACTP. It hallmarks a turning point in the country's efforts to ensuring the protection and continued survival of the St. Lucian parrot, otherwise called the Amazona versicola, one of our most prized possessions as a people. Permanent Secretary attached to the Agriculture Ministry, Mr. Barrymore Felicia, says the time is rife to strategically launch interventions that will not only conserve wildlife-friendly habitats in St. Lucia, but ultimately create eco-friendly zones that will be of value to tourism, education, forestry, and environmental conservation efforts. We see progress on the delivery of our mandate, the ACTP, the mandate is on the preservation of, of, of parrots, of threatened parrots specifically, and the government of St. Lucia, we have the responsibility for animal protection. The department is cognizant of both anthropogenic and non-anthropogenic threats, as which may lead to the depletion or even the extinction 
of species. And in most recent times, you've seen the extinction of birds such as the red tail and elephant bird, the red rail, sorry, and elephant bird. So once again, this is a momentous occasion for, for both parties to deliver on their mandate. Of President of the Association of Threatened Parrots, Martin Goff, says his organization is as concerned as the people of St. Lucia about the safety of the St. Lucian parrot. For this reason, he explains, the reconstruction of the facilities around the Union Forestry Department is testimony to his organization's commitment to addressing possible threats to wildlife in a holistic manner. And today to be here again after 10 years, it's a, it's a big step for us, looking forward for another eight years, completing a wildlife education center here on the island makes dreams coming true for us. We never expect when we start here that we get such a good cooperation and that we're working on such visionary projects like the uh, wildlife education center. So, and facing all the challenges like climate change, we as ACTP want to assure you that we do our absolutely best to stay together with the government of St. Lucia and working on the conservation of the wildlife from St. Lucia. Minister for Agriculture, who has responsibility for the Forestry Division, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph says, the project is just one other intervention to safeguard our farming constituents. As he explains, airmarking safe habitats for the parrots will not only protect them, but will address some of the challenges farmers face with stray parrots on their farms. Whilst we have been successful in preserving and extending the population of our parrots, based on discussions we had, Martin and myself, it's also a problem for some of our farmers. Um, and we now have to see how we can educate our farmers, educate our schools, especially schools in the communities that um, uh, uh, experiencing that negative impact. So at least we, we can educate them and, and see how we can en engage in programs that can reduce on the negative impact of the parrots on our farmers' crops. This week's signing of the breeding loan agreement will be the fourth formal arrangement in 10 years with the Organization of the Conservation of Threatened Parrots to address the welfare of our wildlife and in particular the Amazon of Versicola. From the Information Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources, Physical Planning and Cooperatives, I am Amanda Faye Clark reporting. As the country continues to observe activities marking the 2019 Nobel Laureate Festival, Minister of Responsibility for Education, Honorable Gail Rigobert, remains unwavering in her commitment to develop an education sector that is more inclusive and allows for all learners to maximize their capabilities. Chris Satney reports. The minister spoke at the 2019 National Awards of Excellence put on at the National Cultural Center by the Division of Education. The introduction of smart classrooms accompanied by the training of teachers to be technologically savvy with the various learning modalities, the minister says, continues to be a priority for her ministry in support of excellence in education. The ministry's vision, Dr. Rigobert says, is to create a culture of equity and equality where every learner is empowered and provided with the necessary resources and opportunities to excel optimally within their area of interest and in keeping with their capabilities. The aim is to ensure that positive morals and attitudes Likewise, skills of critical thinking and digital literacy, as well as a culture of inclusion, equity, innovation, and entrepreneurship are engendered within our schools. Held since 2004, the National Awards of Excellence award students who have excelled in the areas of sports, arts and academics and also educators for the outstanding service in education on the island. It was preceded by the school's music festival which showcased the talents of students in song and the playing of musical instruments and was followed by the Walcott Schools Festival which celebrates the achievements of Nobel laureate the late Derek Walcott and his twin brother the late Roderick Walcott, with a production entitled Masquerade Master. 
Ministry representative on the Nobel Laureate Festival Committee, Cantilia Louis, is pleased with the execution of all events and the talents displayed by students. Basically, the first week of the Nobel Laureate Festival is dedicated towards schools, especially the arts in the schools and um, promoting them. So in terms of uh, ensuring that our students are exposed to the arts, understand what this time is about, what we are celebrating, I think we have done a great job um, with the awards ceremony. We were able to make sure we highlighted all of the students and the employees who have done in some way something to ensure that the ministry continues its excellent work. The ministry also hosted a visiting group from the Caribbean Secondary Schools Drama Association based in Trinidad and Tobago. The group's president, Anderson Labari, conducted workshops with students and teachers on culture forms and also paid a courtesy call on the Minister for Education, Honorable Dr. Gail Brigabert. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, I am Chris Satney reporting. This is Nation Beat. We're back in a moment. Imagine being away from home, surrounded by danger and hostility, unable to escape or speak the language, and being exploited. It might sound like fiction, but for 40 million victims of human trafficking worldwide, it is a reality. Innocent people enticed by the promise of a new life, then enslaved into forced labor or sex trafficking, human trafficking happens in plain sight. Know the signs, see it, report it. To report suspected cases of human trafficking, call the TIB hotline at 847. Welcome back. The mobility of St. Lucians with physical disabilities is expected to be improved as a humanitarian arm of the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints donated wheelchair and mobility devices. The National Council of and for Persons with Disabilities welcomed the generous contribution of wheelchairs and mobility devices from the Latter-day Saints charity, which will bring much comfort to the disabled. A key component of the visit was the training of persons as assessors and technicians on how to assess a person's mobility needs, as well as how to assemble and use the wheelchairs. President of the Council, Maffalus James, says he is pleased that St. Lucians are now trained to serve patients with mobility challenges around the island. So as a result of this training, we now have a proud team of six local assessors and technicians who are fully trained to execute this program, who are now able to go out into the communities to do these assessments, to do it in an efficient convenient and customer-centered manner. When I say customer, I do not mean paid customer. I mean client, I mean the people we serve, the people we work for, because these are donations. They've been given to us freely and we will give them freely. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator the Honorable Miri Isaac, expressed appreciation to the Latter-day Saints charity for the generous contribution and says it will make the lives of the disabled easier. So I am saying to you, St. Lucia, this gift that we have received, I want you to take care of it, to appreciate it because it was given to you with so much love by people who do not even know you, people who took time off their busy schedules to travel all the way down here to give you this precious gift. Caribbean wheelchair specialist for the Latter-day Saints charity, Don Hart says, his organization remains committed to making a contribution that will allow the disabled to enjoy a life of mobility. The Latter-day Saints charity donated 138 wheelchairs and 101 mobility devices. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. That's Nation Beat. Join us next time on NTN at 7.30 p.m. with a repeat at 7.30 a.m. and on this station as we feel the pulse and heart of our community. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.